Welcome to the Lock In Podcast. This is episode 26 for Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. My name's Conor Mwinehan and I must apologise, it's been over two weeks since we had the last episode. I've been out sick, thankfully not with COVID-19, but I'm glad to be back at work and back on the web with this show. Who am I? Conor Mwinehan. I work at Black Knight. We're the web hosting company trying to keep everyone connected and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the show. But first, I want to welcome today's guest on today's show. She's a published writer of original speculative fiction, horror, graphic novels. She's breathed new life into characters from the Judge Dredd universe, among others. And she lives just up the road from me in County Galway. Although as of today, we couldn't visit each other now. Maura McHugh, welcome to the show. Ireland is at level three and uh, we'd have to go to the Clare Galway border and wave at each other at this stage. (laughs) Isn't that it? Yeah, I think that's it. We're not allowed to leave counties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the way it is right now. How has the lockdown been for you in general? Um, it's It's been, I think the great word is challenging. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I used to rent a co-share space in Kinvara, which is in Galway. Mm. And <clears throat> when the lockdown happened, that went away. So I had started that in order to make a distinction between work and home and and also to get some socialization because I'd worked long enough freelance from home and I started to realize it was having kind of, I really needed more. this And and this was a brilliant space. And at the time, typical Ireland, I didn't have high speed broadband. (laughs) I had a version of broadband, Mm. but it wasn't good enough. So I did those things that went away. My husband moved back (laughs) to working from home because he's a software engineer. And, um, and then, so my whole life, everything got thrown up. And so all my schedules got destroyed. And then I had to do shopping for my parents and worry about them. And, you know, so actually it was a very difficult time and and creatively destroyed me. And uh, funny enough, I don't know, you know, Tana French is a Irish crime writer. And yesterday in the Irish Times, she actually described this period as a smoking crater in her creativity. (laughs) And she just finished her last book in February. Mm. So she was very lucky. But I totally identify with that and a lot of my writer friends as well, because a lot of the things I had set in, which was to keep off social media in order to get work done and to avoid the news just to get work done. And uh, because nobody knew what was happening, <clears throat> Pardon me, my throat's a little um, uh, tickly today. Um, uh, you, you just, I just was on a lot of time, and it wasn't good for me. And mm. so, over the months, I've had to course correct. <laughs> yeah, we all have. I think changes. Um, everyone has felt the change one way or another. Some people have obviously felt a lot of hardship from it. Um, people who have, uh, in fact, people I think who have worked from home and been used to sort of socially being socially isolated have found actually that there are a new set. Of, there is a new set of challenges. Um, I, yeah. I found I work from home here as well for Black Knight, but. Um, uh, I found uh, that that worked fine, but I wasn't used to the whole fam- family piling in the door on top of me and them them all trying to work from home as well. So it has yeah. been it has been challenging. There's no doubt about it in different ways, uh, Maura. Yeah. Um, you, you're a writer. You were just telling me you 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 maintained a day job up until very very recently uh, in in yeah, technology. I mean, but that's very common with writers. Yeah. I mean, most the, the pay is very poor. Yeah. I I'm not on the status of. Um, I don't know, George R. R. Martin or something, you know, I mean, yeah, then you're, you're okay. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I think the uh, revenue in Ireland said that the average writer is making less than 10 grand a year. Yeah. And I would say that's probably true. Yeah. How did you <laughs> um, get into it, Maura? So, sorry? How did you get into writing and, and, uh, and, um, and, and into, I guess, science fiction in particular? Oh, I was always total nerd geek person <laughs> I liked when it wasn't cool at all in mm. Ireland <laughs> very uncool and uh, but yeah I loved horror as well that's always been a strong thing and I was actually quite an introverted kid I've read a lot mm. um, and the only thing my parents had to worry about was the fact that I liked these um, horror novels with these 
lurid covers <laughs> i think it's like i think parents need something to worry about so that's mm. what they fixated on that i was into all this science fiction mm. and it was like for generationally they couldn't that wasn't something mm. they could lock on to i mean fairy tales etc which i also loved you know it was a bit more mythology a bit more understandable but this was a whole new thing for them um yeah but isn't there? It's. I often think that there's a very strong um, gothic tradition in 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 Irish literature. Obviously, we're talking Absolutely. about Bram Stoker and the like as well. But if you go deep enough into the the folklore and the traditional tales and yeah. and stuff like that, some of that stuff's pretty gruesome. In fairness, oh, I love it. Like <laughs> I mean, that's that's the kind of that's my bread and butter. I love um, I love our folklore. And actually, the thing the thing is that Irish people have still a very strong connection to place and landscape and tradition. And I, I, I say this a lot and actually in podcasts, which is that, uh, especially to people who aren't Irish, you know, is that you always have this situation where someone will say like, um, oh, I don't believe in the fairies, hmm. but my uncle, and then there'll yes. be a story. And then there'll be, and that time I got lost in the woods, but, 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 you know, there's, um, so uh, I think that sense of the mysterious um, is still really strong in Irish culture. It's interesting. Um, I know you've worked on, um, I think I mentioned 2000 AD and, uh, and the Judge Dredd universe in particular. And you've mm-hmm. done some particular work. Um, I know you've done other stuff as well. Maybe, maybe you want to talk about that as well. But you've done a particular work with a character called Judge Anderson. Is she a particular favourite of yours? Yeah, I mean, she was like a bit of a hero, a hero of mine when I was growing up, because um, in 2000 AD, which I did read, because um, I've always read comics as well, whatever mm. was available, and there wasn't a lot uh, initially, thankfully, now that's not the problem. Um, so Anderson was like, like, she hit 2000 AD in my, like a bombshell, because she was so, um, she was, she was, treated as a judge who mm. was never treated differently mm. like that was a cool thing about the judges system in in the comics is that the men and women were all like they were judges yes. that's it you know and she was a side judge which meant that she had psychic abilities which was very much my bag <laughs> and she had a great sense of humor so when i read her as a kid and i when the first graphic novel was collecting her stories came out like mm. i bought all of those um so and then it's it's different because since then there's been an explosion of these kinds of characters. But she was actually very, um, she was she was new and she was cool and I loved her mm. very much. So I never ever ever imagined as a child that I would write Anderson. And I literally nearly fell off the couch when I got the I was happened to read the email on my phone when that happened. You know. So yeah, I love writing her. I've just finished a short. A story of on her in the 2000 AD, uh, what's called the magazine, mm. which is the magazine that comes out every month, and um, that was the 30th anniversary of the magazine. Judge um, t- 2000 AD has been continuously published for 42 years, and they do weekly um, progs, as they're known uh, programs. So. Um, yeah, so it's an amazing thing to be part of this incredible institution with, and we're talking every great um, co- comic book writer from the UK and and also Ireland have have appeared in 2000 AD. It's an incredible institution. I'm really honoured to be part of it, quite frankly. Fantastic. What else are you doing, Maura, at the moment? Uh, what have you coming um, up? Well, actually, Rebellion, who's the company that owns 2000 AD, they... They seem to like my work. <laughs> so I had a novella published at the beginning of the year by them, which is set in the what's known as the Judges Universe, which is the uh, precursor to what is the future. So it's set mm. in like decades before it. And I had, so I wrote a story called Psyche, which is about the, um, uh, the beginning of the side division. Uh, so prior to the mega city coming about, these stories are set. So that's uh, something. I had a collection published last year of my original fiction uh, called, um, uh, oh my God, I'm blacking <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. 
<laughs> we'll look it up. When the boughs withered. Yes. The boughs withered. Sorry. Oh, my God. Because I was... I was jumping through lots of things in my mind. Yeah. And, uh, and then I had a radio play come out last year as well uh, with Near FM, who were great. Yeah. I had a fantastic experience with them. Um, I'm working with Outsider Games, who is a games company. Uh, we're adapting, and uh, that's nearly done, Jennifer Wilde, which is a comic I wrote, which is an Irish comic. That's being adapted to a video game. And I'm also working with them on another project. Um I've got more novellas coming out from Rebellion. Um, so, yeah, and I'm working on screenplay as well. So, <laughs> wonderful. I, I'm I'm doing a lot. Fantastic. You're you're doing a lot. You're you're producing a lot. And have you got over that initial uh, smoking crater um, sort of vibe, uh, Maura? Have Have you found your stride again in? In what has yeah. turned out to be a long haul for us, really, um, uh, whether yeah. whether restrictions are tightened or loosened, uh, there doesn't seem to be any uh, short term fix for the current situation that's going on globally. No, I mean, we're looking at a minimum of a year before, you know, I think mm. it'll be August. It'll be summer next year before mm. any sort of vaccine and mm. who knows how long it'll take to get one. Yes, but that's the other thing, yeah. you know. So, yeah, we're looking at this like 2022 is when I think we'll be able to, things will be easier. So that's fine. You have to adjust. Mm. This is where we are. And, uh, you know, you have to be conscious of other people. I, I've, I, I'm i very ruthless about all the regulations. I stick to them um, because I have elderly parents. I always think about other people's. Um, I have friends who have disabilities and who have immune compromised systems you know so i always think about other people so yes um i've started to finally hit my stride back it took me way longer than i would have liked mm. right i mean actually if there was anything i'd be annoyed i'd try i don't believe in regrets but <laughs> <laughs> if there's any regret it's like how long it took me to adjust but yeah. now i have yeah i'm actually really in a good place now and then september i kind of really late August, September, I really started to do re-establish my rules, which is mm. social media needs to be kept at a distance. Yeah. Um, you know, consume news in, in, in moderate amounts. And remember, there are amazing people in the world doing fantastic things all the time. And the reason we're all still running is because of these brilliant people in the world, in, like our health force, you know, yeah. our teachers, you know. The people, the front line, the people in the shops, the delivery people, you know, there's people who check on the elderly, the care homes, you know, there's just mm. really so many amazing people doing tremendous work. We're uh, we're tightening up a little bit on the restrictions, as has been mentioned, obviously, enough. Ireland going to level three. We don't know what's going to happen after that, uh, Maura. The uh, evenings are getting darker. Uh, the nights are getting longer. Uh, it is maybe time to spend a little more time at home with a good book or a good uh, graphic novel or something like that. Uh, any recommendations or suggestions for people? Um, the series that actually got me through, funny enough, they became like a comfort food to me during lockdown, was Martha Wells' series. It's called The Murderbot Diaries. And um, so this is hard, hard science fiction. It's future, set in a far future. And um, there are a series of novellas and they end with a novel. Um, and she, her next book in that series will be out next year. And for some reason, they just really um, heartened me. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love that. I mean, and then, you know, there's, uh, there's really so much television and shows on at the moment, you know, um, I, I'm watching, currently watching things like uh, Lovecraft Country, which is real uh, horror. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh gosh, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> there's uh, a lot. There's a lot. almost like too much, mm. you know, and, and that is uh, something again, mm. like, um, oh, and in fact, I was just looking at the trailer for a new computer game, which is Cyberpunk 2077, which I have to say, mm. I'm super loving the look of it yes so um so i'm also playing games and stuff like that but again i have to be careful that it doesn't just like 
you use that to distract yourself from the reality of what we're living in. And you have to kind of get a balance between, um, you know, uh, stuff that's going to shore you up and mm. help you through things and, and not get lost in it either. Mm. So that's what I try to do. Has it, it must have crossed your mind, Maura, as it, it does mine on a regular basis, uh, that uh, if you read uh, dyst- dystopian fiction in particular, uh, that all of a sudden uh, the truth and the life we live in is turning out to be stranger than that. Um, uh, you know, what do you, yeah. what do you make of that? I, I was talking to, uh, I interviewed a, a horror film director on this show um, a couple of months back and I said, uh, I said, is the, me- is the message from, from uh, speculative fiction writers is the message suddenly I told you so or what is it what do you make of it yeah well I think that kind of dystopian threat Mm -hmm. has always been in literature um, you know from the geez since the 19th century you know so there's always been a threat of that and to be honest uh, funny I should mention cyberpunk the game like I grew up with um, cyberpunk which was very very popular in the 80s 90s going into the and then it sort of eased off a bit you know but um so cyberpunk always said you know the mega corporations are going to eat you yeah. okay. <laughs> and your life is going to be calm completely mm. controlled by uh the internet and all of these things and all of that has actually come true uh, in different versions of it so um i have a very soft spot for dystopians um because a lot of the time if they're done right i i actually am a big believer in having hope in stories i think yeah. there's no point you know yeah. i i mean i i i find um gr- really grim dystopians that offer you no hope of any survival that's a chore for me. So I need something within it that will say that even in these situations, um, we can have our freedom and we can actually fight to uh, have freedom. And and that, I think that's actually really where the arc of the world is going. But we always have these blips. So, yeah, I mean, and, and the Judge Dredd universe is a dystopia. Yes. The whole thing about it yeah. is a police state. Yes. Well, judge police state, yes. you know. Um, but within that, the whole thing about Judge Universe is that it's a satire critique yeah. of what we have now. And it always has been that way. Um, so it's very useful to have that universe to go in and occupy and tell stories which are actually relevant to today. Do you think in in our world today that uh, humanity, that that society, that that people like you and I and and our neighbours, friends, are beginning to develop an understanding of where the dangers are, where the threats are? I know you and I, we were talking earlier about uh, maybe the... uh, the over reliance on social media, and uh, I, let me put it to you another way: has has dystopian fiction ever conceived of something like the social social media uh, as a tool for for manipulation that that exists today? Yeah. It's it's um, actually, uh, as I said, I have an IT background, and I remain very interested in this yeah. issue, and it's relevant to my work as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the likes of Cambridge Analytica and how they gamed data of people. I think that is really genuinely disturbing. And, um, but I think, I think uh, social media, the likes of Facebook now in particular, say with Cambridge Analytica, I think we're in the wild west days still, and people just never conceived that this could happen. And it has to be regulated and it has to be controlled because you can't have um, multi-billion dollar company, uh, corporations controlling, uh, dictating and manipulating our lives. It's just impossible. And I have to say, if you know, we're lucky to be in the EU because at least... I mean, they're not perfect, so mm. I don't want to get into a, a debate <laughs> about them. But at least they actually have mm. um, said that we have a right to privacy. Yeah. And that, you know, we, and they brought in slowly, it's not 
an institution that works quickly in the mm. slushes, but it actually has addressed certain issues. I, even on this really minor thing, I always say to people is like, you know, sort of God bless the EU, which is data roaming. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't have data roam. Not that we can go to any country at the moment, but we wouldn't have, da- you know, free, free data roaming. Yeah. Yeah. if it wasn't for the EU. So you actually have to start regulating this stuff. I mean, imagining that as someone who's, you know, more wealthy like than God or whatever, uh, that we are going to leave our, all our lives in their hands? No way, you know, so. Hmm. And I suppose the message, as you point out, from from fiction is that it's important to have hope and that there is hope and there are, there are many positive yeah. things and very many positive things being done out there. Maura McHugh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I could talk to you all day. And thanks uh, so much for agreeing to come on the show. Thank you. That's fantastic. Uh, Maura McHugh. Uh, Splinister.com, I should say as well, Maura, is uh, her website and you can find all her work uh, collected there as well. A couple of housekeeping things. Uh, Again, apologies uh, for uh, not being with you for a couple of weeks. We'll be resuming a weekly schedule again now. You can find out uh, all of the past episodes of the show and you can uh, find all the ways to subscribe on the website at uh, thelockin.ie. I also want uh, to mention Indie Cork Festival of Film and Music which is going on right now uh, manfully and womanfully making sure that they can get as much as they can done with social distancing uh, and adhering to all of the guidelines in the Gate Cinema in Cork but there is also and we're very proud to be involved with it as sponsors the uh, Indie Cork Online Festival Centre which is brought to you by Black Knight and uh, you can find out more about all of that at IndieCork.com and finally um, as I've mentioned we don't talk about work or our products in general but right now we are running a series of free webinars uh, because we discovered it's not just enough to provide services for companies who want to get business online you've also got to provide them with uh, education and training as well so our series of free webinars is up and running right now and uh, it's uh, in association with the .me registry and we're calling it Go Global with .me so you can find out more about that over there Sinewild and Trosa by the Kindly Verit on Tacht and Chachuin until then Slán agus